Well, we have had an excellent lineup tonight of leading elected officials, experienced physicians, and my next guest is both. Uh, Dr. Tom Price, he has served uh, as an orthopedic surgeon uh, and has served as the, uh, the policy uh, chairman for the Republicans in Congress, number four in leadership position, and just doing a great job Thanks, and uh, appreciate all that you oh, do. Former chairman of the Republican Study Committee, That's right. the conservatives. That's right. Thanks so much for what you're doing in this program. What a lineup you've had. My goodness gracious. Well, you're the icing on the cake, here. <laughs> hey, we, get, we got a congressman and a doctor all rolled into one. Give us your perspective on uh, where the court is and where they may be headed. Well, I'm not a Supreme Court watcher, but I do believe that the indications that we've gotten both yesterday and today with the questioning uh, ought to give us some reason for hope. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that regardless of what the court does, we've got a lot of work to do uh, on the health care issues and on, and on this nation to bring us back to a point where we don't have to worry about mm -hmm. a Supreme Court ruling in this. Uh, you, you think about where we are as a country right now and even the concern that we, we might even think that the Supreme Court could rule right. this to be constitutional. Uh, we, we've lost an awful lot and we need to regain it. And I know that, that uh, FRC Actions do, is doing a great job to pull us back on, uh, on center. Well, thanks, Congressman. As I mentioned, you're a member of the leadership team in the House, uh, helping direct, in part, the messaging and the policies that they focus on. Where, where, is, where do you sense the leadership is on, on this issue uh, in the Congress, on the repeal of Obamacare, if the court doesn't do what many people pray that it amen, will do. Amen, amen. Well, w the, the leadership in, in virtually the entire conference is, is wholly behind the wholesale repeal. And the, and the reason is not just because it was put in by the other, other team. Uh, the reason is because it violates every single principle yes. that you and I and the American people hold dear on health care. Every single one. Uh, and, and so it ha absolutely has to be repealed. The entire thing, lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, that doesn't change the challenge that we have, though, because the status quo is clearly unacceptable. We're seeing individuals that are not being able to have access to the kind of care that they need and, and not, are not able to afford it and not getting the quality of health care that they need. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is, is that there are wonderful solutions, uh, and, and, and we'll offer many, many of them, mm -hmm. and we believe that the solutions that we will put forward will be the kinds of solutions that the American people will embrace. Well, speaking of that, you reminded me, uh, probably one of the most um, passionate speeches I've ever seen of the, uh, the House Speaker John Boehner mm -hmm. was when, when he went to the floor in opposition to yes. Obamacare. Uh, I guess it was right before Christmas when that, uh, when that finally passed or after. I remember. But the, uh, the, the Republicans had an alternative yes. that they put forward uh, that would address many of these critical issues. I, I, is, a, is a new version of that in the works to come behind this? The committees of jurisdiction, there are three of them, Education and Workforce and, and Energy and Commerce and Ways and Means are all working to, to, to come up with uh, what we would like to propose as, as the alternative. But again, there are wonderful solutions to get folks covered, to make certain that the insurance companies aren't ruling the show as the government would like to uh, rule the show, and to make certain that we have the highest quality of care. And ultimately, and, and, and actually the, the most important, is to make certain that we don't violate that trusting relationship between patients and physicians. And that's what's so destructive about the president's bill. Uh, it, it truly destroys that trusting relationship right. between patients and doctors so that you as a patient uh, won't know whether, or if this is allowed to come to pass, won't know whether or not me as your doctor are telling you what I believe to be in your best interest because that's my experience in education or whether it's what the government is forcing me to tell you. And, and it's really that basic. Well, Congressman, I know that having been a doctor, I guess you're still a doctor, just not practicing. <laughs> You've I guess you figured it all out. You're not practicing anymore. But the, you hear from other doctors. Sure. And, and what is the sense that you're hearing from, from doctors? The, the concern that's out there? Are they, what, what, what are you hearing? Their level of frustration and, and concern and anger is at an all-time high. Uh, and, it, and it's because they don't believe that they now are able to, to, to uh, advocate in a very positive way for the patients and have it be result in the outcome that the patient ought to have. Uh, they see this, this incredible reach, this incredible arm and reach of the government coming in to not just the, the, the front office, not just the billing office, but into the exam room, into the operating room, and into the clinic room. And, it, it, and it, it, they're so frustrated by uh, what's going on. And it will only get worse if this is allowed to continue. Uh, we see day after day the, the, the CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, come out with more rules and more proposals that will adversely affect what physicians can do for their patients. And it, it, it's so terribly destructive. And, and the, the, the title of this, this on trial, it's truly freedom. 
versus yeah. government. Well, and there. that's the question I want to ask you next because you're uniquely positioned to answer this. If you, if you weighed it in a balance and you looked at the threat to health care that Obamacare poses and you looked at the threat that it poses to freedom, which is at greater risk? I, I think they're part and parcel. But I do believe that, that the threat to freedom is, is fundamental and basic with this. Uh, if, if, if we as a society are going to say that two free individuals, one who wants a service and the other who can provide a service, may no longer make that contract, uh, that's a huge, huge loss. Uh, when, you, when you couple that with the kind of service that the individual is asking for, that is some of the most personal and, 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 and important in their life or in their family's life, then it, it, it cuts across everything. The freedom to be able to select your health care, who's treating you, how you're being treated, where you're being treated, when you're being treated, uh, is, is absolutely one of the most important things that, that you and I and any of us ever face in our lives for ourselves and for our families. So you would say it poses a great risk to both. Uh, I, don't, I don't know of anything that's had a greater risk on our, on our freedom. I think this is the poster child for an expansive and oppressive government that we have seen over the last uh, three plus years. Uh, and, and this is, the, this is if, if there were ever a place to draw the line, this is it. Congressman Tom Price, thank you so Tony, much. Thank you. Appreciate your leadership. You. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you.